morning. It's great to see you this morning. Welcome to worship on this first Sunday in Advent, in our Advent season. We hope that you had a great week of Thanksgiving. Maybe you got some Christmas going on at your house already to get you in the mood for this beautiful, beautiful time of year. Advent is about the future, our future, yes. But more importantly, God's future. As the Jews waited centuries for God to release them from bondage, we wait for the full realization of the kingdom of God that Jesus launched almost 2,000 years ago. James 5, verse 7 says, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. Are we supposed to spend the rest of our lives on earth waiting? Well, yes, we probably will, but with eager anticipation and with plenty to do. Perhaps we could call this active waiting. It is waiting because it will be God himself who brings his kingdom to fulfillment, not us. It is active because we do not sit around passively waiting for God to take care of everything in the world that needs fixing. Think about that this morning. Jesus is coming again. Amen. He has promised it will happen, so we know it's true. And just like his birth, it will come at a time that is unknown to us. How will you prepare for his coming? Advent is a season for singing. We sing our praise. We sing our songs of hope. We sing of God in human flesh. We sing of our Lord. We sing our love. We sing our gratitude. We sing our commitment to Jesus and the mission of his life. It's music, not drudgery. It's overflowing song, not dead ritual. And as we wait for the fullness of God's kingdom to come, we sing our longing from deep within. We sing while we actively wait. We sing while we're down. We sing when we're happy. We sing while we work for our master from the dawn to setting sun. We sing when we're together. We sing when we're alone. As a community of faith, we sing in the plural and in our own personal love relationship with the Lord, we sing our love in the singular. Let's sing this morning. Song 116, I know you wait all year long to be able to sing all these beautiful 
Songs of Christmas, this one, Oh Come All Ye Faithful, if you're able to stand, stand together, and let's sing on this beautiful carol. We see a lot on our list there on the screen. Are there any that we would like to add this morning? Helen. David apparently has been sick most of the week. Missed all the festivities and shopping. I don't know, maybe he did that on purpose. No. <laughs> the shopping part. <laughs> and both of my granddaughters Miranda and Christine. Miranda and Christine living up in New York, life issues. Jeremy has a prayer concern. Your dad? I know, it's so great to see you out. We've been praying for you. Patty, yeah, Patty had to put her puppy down this week, and Pat's been really close with, with she's the grand, grand, grand pup, grand moms and pups over here, so Patty and Pat, that's always hard. You've been, you've, you've been through that, understand. It's hard to lose. Lose a pet. Please can. Jim? Jim Witt. Too sick? Okay. Jim Witt. Okay. Jim's husband, for those of you, you know, 
Him. Okay. Anybody else left here for our Just starting into the cold weather, right? Yeah. Ruth Ann? Anyone else? Please, people, continue to pray for, for Jimmy and for his mother, Marion. Um, whatever we've got to, they've got to figure out and however we can help with, help them, we'll see what we can do to, to deal with an unexpected tragedy. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Let's take a few moments to pray. I'm going to ask the band to just play the chorus of that song. So we can sing the chorus of that song. Oh, come, let us adore him. We adore him. We rely upon him to answer our prayers. worship you, we praise you. It is you we turn to for hope, for joy, for strength, to understand love and to be able to love, we turn to you. The one who teaches us all things. And we pray, Lord, that each, each of us here today would strengthen our relationship with you, would come to you in a different way this morning, would approach you with longing to know you fully and completely and for you to have all there is of us. That's the only way in this life that we, with all this waiting, <coughs> will have joy and peace and feel strength and know love. Thank you, Lord, for your loving care for us and for our families, for those that we love. And we pray today, Lord, for those we have mentioned this morning, for David, as he's been sick for a few days, for Noah, who's come through some really horrible days and is now on to rehab for his issues, for John and Mary, who suffer with illnesses and we are so glad that they are strong today to be out to worship with this family together. For Jim Witt, who's dealing with issues of health, and for the shelter guests who are sick. For Etta's family, for all those who are battling physical illness. We don't want to forget to mention Gloria and lift her up, Lord, to you and George, and Art, our family members. Alberta, who's going in for surgery this week, Lord, be her strength, bring healing and health. And we pray for Miranda and Christine, for Jeremy's dad, for Pat and Patty, 
for the issues of life that are affecting them negatively, for grief, even grief over a, a beloved pet. You gave us hearts that love our animals. And so that's a, a valid, valid grief that we've got to deal with. So we pray for, for Pat and for Patty. Continue to pray for those we know who have suffered, suffered a loss just before these holidays. For every day that there's an emptiness felt, Lord, we pray for your comfort and your peace for them. Pray for, for Jimmy Hughes and for his mom, Marion, and for Jim's mother and sisters and brothers who are mourning a loss. For little Maggie and Jimmy who lost their pop pop. We pray that you would help them through this time of grief and struggle and making arrangements and dealing with issues of the absence of someone they love. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this place and this time. For each one of us, Lord, we thank you for our family here. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to be encouraging and loving toward one another, welcoming for, for new faces, welcoming for those who come back into the fellowship who may have been gone for a while. Help us, Lord, to be loving and to be welcoming and to be accepting and to be tolerant and to give we enter this season of giving and we think about what you God gave in Jesus what you knew you were going to give in coming in the way that you did as a human being we'll celebrate all that it's in our hearts and in our minds help us Lord to read your word and to pray and to, to make you the most important part of our lives of our everyday thinking and feeling and acting and speaking. As we worship, Lord, we pray, God, that we would lift you up with our thoughts and our motives. Help us, Lord, to be focused on you, not thinking about other things while we're here, worshiping and praising you. Let us lift you up. Let us set you on a throne and bow at your feet with thanksgiving and gratitude that you the God of the universe, choose us even today to be yours. And we choose you to be ours. Bless us, O oh God. Be blessed by our worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Responsive reading is going to be on your screen. We have been given some explicit instructions on how to wait as followers of Jesus. The entire New Testament is all about how we wait actively. We start now, by the grace of God, to live by the law of love that is the core of the kingdom of God that Jesus gave us. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Jesus said, love your, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Jesus said, love yourself as you. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good 
and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now enjoy this children's moment video. Maybe just a team. No one will know as I'm as long as I'm very, very careful. Oh! Hello there everybody. I didn't know we were filming yet. <laughs> This isn't what it looks like. Okay it is, but you can't blame me. My aunt and uncle do this to me every year at the start of Advent. They always put one present, and it's usually the best present, under the tree as a reminder that we are waiting for the gift of Jesus' birth. It drives me wild. They say the Jewish people waited hundreds of years for Jesus to come and that I should be able to wait a few weeks. They even say I should be happy about because I know my gift will come. I'm trying, Auntie Kim. I'm trying, Uncle Joe. It's just really hard when I know it's going to be so good. Maybe the Bible can give me some help. Listen up and let's hear how Mary responds to being told she is getting the greatest present of all. After the angel Gabriel finished sharing the news of Jesus' birth with Mary, she replied to him, saying, I am the servant girl of the Lord. Let this happen to me as you say. Then the angel went away. Mary got up and quickly went to a town in the mountains of Judea to Zachariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the unborn baby inside Elizabeth jumped. Then Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and cried out, God has blessed you more than any other woman, and God has blessed you, the baby you will give birth to. Why has something so good happened to me? When I heard your voice, the baby inside me jumped with joy. You are blessed because you believed what the Lord said would happen. Mary responded, My soul praises the Lord. My heart is happy because God is my Savior. I'm not important, but God has shown His care for me, His servant girl. From now on, all people say that I am blessed because the powerful one has done great things for me. Ever had to wait to open your presents? Isn't it tough to wait for something exciting? Imagine Mary, who had to wait for a huge promise from God. How do you think she felt during that time? She was patient and trusted that something amazing was coming her way. Do you ever feel like waiting is a bit like playing hide and seek? Or going on a treasure hunt? It's hard, but isn't it thrilling to think about the surprises God has planned for us? What if instead of focusing on what we haven't received yet, we went with excitement and anticipation just like Mary did? Think about how much more incredible those presents will be when we finally get to open them. Waiting can make the reward even sweeter, just like when Jesus was born. And waiting on God is always worth it. Thank for the week so there's music on Monday youth music and senior band Tuesday full schedule seniors and Bible study for everyone 
followed by women's ministry. We're going to a service project this week. The children's Christmas party is on Wednesday. So if you were thinking you were helping with that or you'd like to help with that, please let me and Jane know. Da, da, da. Friday at 6 o'clock, Corkadex and Tink Fellowship. I think they're going on the kettle. Yeah, they're going on the kettle 5 to 7 this week, 5 to 7 Friday. So spread the word, bring them all out. Next Sunday, <laughs> 9.45, Sunday school. We want to see you here. 11 o'clock worship. And I have a couple more things. So down below you can see there's a few changes. I want to make you aware of the schedule so you know ahead of time, so you can plan. Um, there, the last two Sundays of December, the 22nd, will be 1030 worship. That will be our Christmas worship, and we will follow it with our core Christmas party. And then we will be having a Christmas Eve service on Christmas Eve at 6 o'clock here for any and all who are able to come. Then on the 29th Sunday, we will also again have a 1030 worship. See, aren't we we're letting you sleep in a little bit? Or take a few extra moments on your morning devotions at home. <laughs> All right, one more, th one more thing at least. So we've got a lot of doors out here in this hallway. And I was talking to Jane this week and I thought, I'm going to ask if anyone is interested in decorating a door for Christmas. Oh, we've got a few takers down there. Okay, adults too. You can, you can pick your theme, any Christmas theme. So... Think about that if you're interested in decorating one of these doors out here in this in this hallway to beautify the the church up here. Um, please let me know if you want to do that. Was there something else? I don't remember. Maybe that's it. Must be it. <laughs> so let's. Um, and again, I didn't choose ushers. I'm really bad at that. We miss Gloria. We miss you, Gloria. <laughs> All right, can I have two, two volunteers for the offering this morning? That's good. Guys. <clears throat> Lord, today we're talking about waiting, so we pray, Lord, you give us patience in our waiting for your kingdom, patience to hear beyond the noise, to see beyond the barriers that others might set up, patience to be quiet and hear your still small voice above the noise of the world. Thank you, Lord, for being patient with us. We thank you for giving and blessing our lives with all that we need. We pray, Lord, you would help us in our giving to give out of love for you, in Jesus' name. Amen.
Now we're going to sing on song 565. God longs to know us. And once we know him, we can sing this song as a testimony. There is no greater thing than knowing Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Right. As the band takes their seats, I invite you to find the scripture. Happy Advent! Doesn't have quite the same ring as Merry Christmas, does it? And yet I think it's important. Christmas isn't here yet. We're in Advent. If I say Happy Thanksgiving, how do you reply? Happy, happy Thanksgiving. If I say Happy Advent, <laughs> you say Happy Advent back. <laughs> We're celebrating Advent. It's weeks of waiting for Jesus to come. Now, I understand that not everybody has the excitement of Buddy the Elf. Anybody remember the movie Elf? Yeah. Annoying Buddy the Elf? A little bit too much energy for me. Not everybody is like that when it comes to Christmas. In fact, for some people, Christmas is depressing. For some people, Christmas is just another day. So over the next month, I don't want us to focus on Christmas so much. I want us to focus on Advent. Jesus is coming. There's no reason to celebrate Christmas if it isn't about Jesus coming. I've often said that there are actually two Christmases now. There's one where we celebrate the birthday of Jesus. And then there's one where we, whatever all this fluff is, where we decorate and we buy gifts for each other and we eat food and all this stuff to celebrate something that is almost forgotten. And we as Christians need to keep our focus. This time of year is about the coming of Jesus. Yes, we exchange gifts to celebrate. We put up Christmas trees to celebrate. But all of this, the only reason for it should be to celebrate Jesus' birth. And yet too many people forget this piece in the middle of all of this. We need to celebrate the coming of Jesus. Happy Advent. Let's celebrate. Father God, we worship you for sending Jesus to the world. Help us to think about that. Teach us something new and different about it this year. Minister to our hearts and our minds and help us to share you with the world around us. We pray it in the name of Jesus. So the word Advent means... What does Advent mean? Advent means coming. That's what the word means. We celebrate Advent. We celebrate the coming of Jesus. Now, at this point in time, back then, there was a 400-year or so period between the last speaker in the Old Testament and the first speaker in the New Testament. During those 400 years, people were waiting. Can you imagine waiting 400 years for something? Let's just simplify. Can you imagine living 400 years? <laughs> this was generations of people waiting for what had been promised. They hadn't heard directly from God for 400 years. Now, we FaceTime with Maggie and little Jimmy, and his eyes pop when he sees us on the phone. Imagine going 400 years without that type of connection. They hadn't heard from their God for 400 years. They had been promised a Messiah, and here we are 400 years plus later, and he hasn't come yet. They're still waiting. Today, we know that Jesus is coming back, and yet we're still waiting. It's been, they waited 400 years, we've been waiting a couple thousand years, and we're still waiting. Now, I will tell you that I don't like waiting. 
which people are often surprised when they hear that I love Disney World, but I don't like waiting. There is an app you can check the wait times on all the rides. I actually checked it this morning. Last I saw, most things were about a 15 minute wait this morning. This is a dead period at Disney World. But other things were 45 minutes or an hour. I hate waiting. I'm not even excited to wait at the grocery store or Walmart or JCPenney. Target used to have the ama an amazing checkout system. I don't know what they did, but now you wait in line at Target. I don't like waiting. A couple of verses, let's see if we can find these. There's a lot of verses in the computer that she has to find. We're gonna look for James chapter five, verses seven and eight. And we're going to look at these verses real quick because they help us understand the waiting. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient. Stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. As you get closer to what you're waiting for, the excitement kind of builds, because you know you're getting there. I can remember, never forget, the one time the kids and I got in line for a roller coaster at an amusement park. I don't remember what it was. I don't, were you with us in that line? I don't remember. Maybe you were. Um, yeah. It was a Six Flags park with a real long line for this roller coaster, and we are waiting, and we're waiting, and we're winding around, and we're winding around, and we finally get to the turnstiles where we are the next people to get on the next train, and we're waiting for the gates to open, and our daughter Megan passes out and falls onto the concrete. We are right there, and instead we get to go to the, the first aid station. The excitement was there. And then Megan. <laughs> I believe we're getting closer to the end of time. And the excitement should be building. And we pray, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. I want us to look at Luke chapter 1 this morning about the waiting. Um, we look at Luke chapter 1 often when we think about Christmas. Why? What was the question that Jane asked in Sunday school this morning? <laughs> Which two books mention the birth of Jesus? Matthew and Luke. Now, Matthew's version is interesting, but Luke's is the one we use all the time. So we're going to look at Luke 1 this morning, um, and we'll get to it. Mary was betrothed to Joseph. Betrothal was more intense than what we consider engagement. You can't break off a betrothal easily. If you're engaged to somebody and it doesn't seem to be working, you go out to dinner and you have a nice little talk and say, this isn't working for me, goodbye. Betrothal? No. Betrothal is basically an absolute promise to join together. You cannot get out of this. Mary and Joseph were betrothed. And an angel comes to her and says, what? You're going to have a baby. And she's like, what? I have not. This is not possible. And the angel says, it's going to be through the Holy Spirit. The baby is going to be the son of the Most High, and he is going to reign forever. Let's jump into, see if we can find verses 31 to 33. What did Mary say? After she said, what? That's not possible. Then she says, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Verse 32. That was 31, right? So did I type wrong? Go back to 31. He didn't put 31 in? 
Yeah, somebody read verses 31 to 33. Jason will, didn't put it in. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. Keep going, 32, 33. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Imagine being a teenager and having an angel come talk to you. That in itself is freaky enough. But then what does the angel tell you? You're going to have the son of the Most High. They understood the term Most High. That was the God that was above all the other gods that existed in their culture. They didn't, for many of them, didn't know who or what that was. The Israelites kind of understood but remember, it's been 400 years since they heard from him, so many of them had forgotten. But Mary obviously understood. Now, we get to verse 38, and there's a period, I think, in the middle there where she's like, um, the angel told me what's going to happen, but this doesn't make any sense to me. I don't think I want to do this, but... If God says it's going to happen, it's going to happen whether I want it or not. What do I do here? Then we get to verse 38 where she says, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be fulfilled. It's going to happen, and she decides to obey. Last week, we looked at the leper, the lepers. Ten of them were healed. One of them came back. What healed them? Do you remember? It was their faith. It was their obedience. Their act of obedience showing their faith in Jesus. In this case, the angel has told Mary what's going to happen. And what does she do? I think she mulled it over for a while and thought, I'm not sure I want to do this. And then, what does she say? I am the Lord's servant. Whatever you say is what I will do. When God tells you to do something, how do you respond? It should be something along the lines of, God, I'm not sure, but okay. May your will fulfill, be fulfilled in me. After that little exchange between the angel and Mary... What's next? Waiting. Here we go back to the waiting. How long did we wait? How long does it take to have a baby? In this case, we're waiting nine months. Now, there are some little things that happen along the way. She goes to Mary Elizabeth, and we hear this stuff about Joseph taking a little fit and... But there's a nine-month period here where what do, does everybody get to do? Wait. During that time, do you think they just sat there and did nothing for nine months? They didn't have TV. They didn't have radio. They didn't have Internet. What do you do for nine months? They lived their lives. She took some time to go visit her cousin Elizabeth. And then she waited. During that time, we know that she took time to pray and to worship. Can you find verse 46? Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord. We're going to go down to verse 55 here, I think. If my notes are right. To Abe, did we skip one? He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months, then returned home. 
Is that the end of it? That's, that's what Jason put in. <laughs> There's a section in there where we know that Mary prayed. She took time to worship. I think she took time as a mother-to-be to be very careful about the baby, especially knowing who this baby was going to be. Any expectant mother pays attention. I shouldn't say any. Unfortunately, some don't, and that's sad. But most good expectant mothers pay attention to what they're doing to that baby inside. In her case, I'll bet she paid even closer attention. She probably tried to eat the best food. She made sure she drank enough water. She did everything she could to take care of that baby. And she lived her life. She probably talked to her friends. She probably did work, probably cleaned the house. She did what any normal expectant mother would do. It's called active waiting. You don't just sit there and do nothing. While you wait, you do something. While we wait in line at Disney World, there are apps on the phones that you can do all sorts of things. One that comes up a lot is a game of charades where a word comes up and everybody gives you clues and you have to guess what the word is. And if you get it right, you flip. If you get it wrong, you flip. And you see how many words you can get in a period of time and then you pass the phone to the next person. And one of the fun things about that game is it almost never stays in just your group. Everybody around that you've never met before in your life joins into this little game. While you wait in line, you do something. We as Christians can't just wait for Jesus to come back. But he is coming back. If you read Revelation 19, you'll see he's not coming as a baby next time. But he is coming. And we are waiting for that promised Messiah to come back. When he comes, he will make all things new. And this messed up world that we live in will be gone. Until then... We wait, but we actively wait. We have to be obedient to Jesus Christ and his spirits leading in our lives. Somebody look up Matthew 22. And when you get there, read verses 37 to 39. It's active waiting. We don't just sit and do nothing. We actively wait. Somebody got it? Uh, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. While we wait, we are active in loving God and loving people. The Salvation Army phrasing for it is heart to God, hand to man. We love God, we love people. Those are God's two commandments to us. How do we love people? Yeah, we meet their needs. We see what we can do to help them out. But I think it's more important that we think about how we can get God's best to them. What is God's best? Jesus. We want everyone to know Jesus. That's what Advent is about. We pray for people that they will come to know Jesus. And our prayer is active. It isn't just a recitation of words. We don't just get a little prayer book and say the words in the book. We take time to think and to pray that they will come to know Jesus in a very real way. You may pray scripture. Some people like to write scripture. Some people pray with art. There are Bibles made with sections where you can color as you read the Bible. I have a friend that loves to 
get canvas and paint her worship to God. We take time to focus on him and we pray to him. While we wait, we are active in worshiping him and loving people. Even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. We pray for the needs of the world. We pray for the needs of our family, our friends, our neighbors. We should be listening to Christian music and focusing on the words of that music. I have multiple apps in my phone for listening to Christian music, and when one station is playing a song I don't like, I just switch apps and find another one. There's one particular station I really like, except for a couple hours in the afternoon when it's counseling time and they allow people to call in and crab their life story. And I'd rather not hear that stuff right now. I just want to listen to music and worship. We count down to the birth of a baby. We count down the days till vacation. We count down to retirement. We pay attention, and we're excited about those things. We can't count the days till Jesus comes, but we can focus on it. Know that he's coming. Get your brain thinking about it, and actively do something about it. As we move through Advent this year, we should actively await is coming. Don't count down the days till Christmas. Focus on Jesus coming. Jesus is coming again. How are you waiting? Close your eyes. Take time to pray. Thank God for sending Jesus. Thank God for his promise that Jesus is coming again. And think about how you can actively wait. I want my wife to come lead us in a chorus that simply says, while we are waiting, come. Jesus, our Lord, Emmanuel, while we are waiting, come. We celebrate Advent looking forward to his coming. Worship as we sing.
promising that you're coming. It's a promise that we can depend on and find hope in. Thank you for that, Lord, in a world where hopes are dashed and quite often we go through the day and don't feel that anything's worth waiting for if we won't by the world standards. But we thank you, Lord, for your promises. We thank you, God, for your word that we can rely upon who you are, who you've promised to be, and that, yes, one day you will come. Help us, O oh Lord, each one of us. We are all different. We all live different lives. We all face different trials. We all have different joys every day. But you know each one of us personally and everything about us, all the things we love and all the things we wish we didn't have to do or deal with. You know all that, Lord. So help us each one, Lord, to desire to know you, to desire to be excited by the hope of your coming. Change our hearts and our minds to be like you. That's what we need today, Lord. Help us, God, to reach out to you. To allow you to be all that we need and all that you want to be. To make us all we can be. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask the band to come back so we could sing a song. sure that's the song I wanted, but that's what you practice, so we'll sing it. <laughs> I do have one more thing I wanted to announce in the announcements. Um, you know that Sue and Judy's dad passed away a while ago this coming Saturday. Is this okay? Everybody's okay. If you would like to support the family, there will be a memorial here for him at 1, one o'clock. All right, so if you'd like to support the Smith family, Smith Ferretti family. No, I'll go, yeah, all of them. <laughs> no, yeah, all of us, yeah. You're welcome to, to show your support and your love on Saturday at 1 o'clock. All right, this isn't the song that I thought I was choosing, so we'll let, we'll, we'll see what, uh, I'm sure that I know it, and we'll learn it together. <laughs>
serve his majesty. Would you stand with me for the benediction?